Welcome back to Indianapolis this week. We bring in now, of course, State Senator Mike Delph. Senator, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. There is talk that you may be considering trading your position as a state senator for possibly a run for U.S. Senate. We, uh, we've been asked by some of our supporters to, to consider that. Um, we have a timetable between now and the end of September to make a final decision, but obviously as a father of five daughters, that is a very um, involved decision that's not my, mine alone to make. And so we're trying to be very deliberate with, with, our, with our thought process on that. Why trade in what you know to be at least uh, the state house of in, uh, in Indianapolis for the dysfunction of Capitol Hill? You know, that's an excellent question, and uh, that's a question that my wife asks me uh, just about every time we talk about this. You know, the country's at a, at a, a moment in time where it's either going to rise or fall. We have problems with international security. We have a problem with this Iran deal that the president's pushing. We obviously have a problem with the national debt with almost a $19 trillion burden on our posterity. I think we're ripping off the next generation. And so there's a sense of duty that, that calls, I think, uh, in this. But there may be other folks out there that are better suited to carry that message than Mike Delph. We'll, we'll make a decision before the end of this September. Was Senator Joe Donnelly wrong to support the president on this Iran deal? Absolutely. I think think uh, anything that allows Iran to possess a nuclear bomb will de destabilize the Middle East and put Israel, uh, our number one ally in the region, uh, put Israel's livelihood at stake. And so I think it's a, a, a grave error to provide cash or comfort to Iran uh, in the um, acquiring of a nuclear bomb. I just think it's terribly dangerous. Donald Trump talking about possibly building a fence along the border. Is that a good idea? Is that even possible? Well, nation states have to have borders by definition, and nation states have to have laws, and nation states should have the ability to enforce the rule of law. And so I think, you know, any border, whether it's north or south, um, we should have the ability to protect our borders, to secure our borders. We know that we have folks that are not just from Mexico and Central America or South America crossing our Mexican border, and not everybody that crosses our southern border uh, means us well. And so I think that's a number one national security issue but, in but America. Is a but is a fence or a wall realistic? Are, are we East Germany? I mean, is that really America to have a wall per se? Well, there's all kinds of things you can do with technology as well with drones and, and whatnot. I mean, they just had a big escape from a prison of a, of a leader of a drug cartel where he, yeah, where he tunneled under the earth. And so I, I think you have to look at technology and, and see what we can do with technology. But I think a, a wall needs to be on the table. Back here at home, infrastructure, a major issue, especially after the situation in Tippecanoe County with the Lafayette Bridge. The governor is talking about possibly dipping into the rainy day fund to focus on infrastructure. Is that the only option on the table? Well, you know, when uh, Governor Daniels was in office, we uh, carried through a, a program called Major Moves. And you see highway construction and road construction going on throughout the state of Indiana. Now, whether or not that has stressed NDOT to the point where we're not able to maintain existing roads and bridges, I don't know. But I, I've heard this issue enough that I would anticipate uh, the legislature and the governor to address something uh, when we go back in session in January. I just left Chicago where every turn I made, I paid a toll. Is it time for Indiana to have tolls everywhere? You know, I'm not a big fan of tolls or tax increases, but I think uh, when we go back into session in January, we'll talk about what we need to do as a state to make sure that we have the best roads and the best infrastructure for our citizens. So yes to tolls or no to tolls? I'm not a fan of uh, tax increases or tolls. I'm so. not a fan of tolls either, so I'm, yeah. glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that from you. When you do return in January, there'll be a very serious discussion on the extension of civil rights to the LGBTQ community. Are we ready to have that discussion in a civil way? Well, I think the legislature needs to have any discussion on public policy uh, done in a civil way. You know, out at the U.S. Supreme Court building, there's a quote above it that says, equal justice under law. And any time you're talking about protecting any special class uh, to the detriment of other classes of individuals, I think you get away from that equal justice under law concept. And so I would have some reservations, you know, 
when I uh, talked on the Senate floor about the RIFRA fix, I suggested that we go back in time and repeal RIFRA, repeal the RIFRA fix, and then rely upon Article 1, Section 3, and that would be my position uh, going forward in January as well. But I'm sure we'll have that discussion and many other discussions when we go back in session. Will you file a bill to repeal RIFRA? Well, you know, that's going to be a discussion for our caucus to make. I don't want to put the caucus uh, in more of a difficult position that we're in right now. Uh, passions are very high on this issue, uh, but that would be where I think we need to go as a, a state and a party to go back in time before RIFRA, uh, before the RIFRA fix, repeal all of that and fall back on Article 1, Section 3. When you read our Indiana State Constitution, one of the central fundamental themes is this idea of the conscience not being able to be coerced by government, the idea that someone's religious faith not be able to be coerced by government, and that's a, that's a fundamental value of the state of Indiana, and we need to remind our citizens of that. Senator McDowell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much Come for having me. Anytime. We look forward to speaking to you uh, later in the year. Thank you very much thank for having me. So I appreciate it.